Mr. Vice President, just weeks ago, two brothers who had stabbed to death Mr. Fahang Amiri in the city of Yazd in Iran were brought to court where they admitted to having killed Mr. Amiri because he was a Baha'i and therefore an apostate. They also claimed that his murder was in fact a pious deed justified by verses from the Holy Quran. They showed no remorse and on the contrary appeared to be prepared to kill other Baha'is as well. Having heard this, the judge decided to release them on bail. It is inconceivable to imagine such an act by a judge if the victim were not a Baha'i. This impunity that prevailed in Iran stems from the clear government policy that Baha'is must be treated differently than any other Iranian, that their blood can be shed, that they can be imprisoned for long sentences without any proof, that their properties can be confiscated, that their shops can be sealed because they were closed on Baha'i holidays, and that their youth can be denied access to higher education. Many of these injustices are outlined in an official government memorandum that deals with the Baha'i question. Another point of this memorandum states that their cultural roots outside the country must also be confronted and destroyed. Today, Iran has exported its persecution of the Baha'is to Yemen, where a similar systematic campaign is being waged against them by the Houthi facto authorities. Yemeni Baha'is are unjustly imprisoned and detained indefinitely by being denied a proper court hearing, and tens of others, including women, have been issued arrest warrants, forcing them into hiding. The Iranian government has time and again repeated its commitment to human rights principles. It is time that the international community calls on Iran to stop treating Baha'is without regard for these commitments and to stop inciting hatred against them both within and outside of its Thank borders. You. Next.